Yeah, welcome to How Can She Snap. This is the Marvel Snap Podcast dedicated to the filthy casuals. I'm the kid, one half of the Super Snap Bros, here with my brother from the same mother, Mr. No big deal. Oh yeah, we got a nice show for you. We got no guests this week because uh, we have a kind of a dumb work schedule, so I don't mind uh, ruining no big deal circadian rhythm. But uh, want to be part. nice to want to be nice to the guests here. Um, we got a nice show today. We got Beat Ray Bill, Beat Ray Ooh. Baller, who came out this week. He's a pretty fun card. Uh, we got some spicy OTAs that came out today, so we'll, we'll be talking about those. Uh, we'll talk about a little bit of the spotlights too, and uh, you know the meta is pretty damn good right now, so we'll get into it. Let's uh, get it. The kid. All right. No big deal. Solo pod. I, f- I feel lonely. How you doing, man? Oh, no, it's it's nice. It's almost like nice for a change, you know? Uh, yeah. It, it, it feels like, all right, you know, it's going to be a little more chill, but uh, maybe, yeah. maybe not two hours or whatever we normally do, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I feel good. Uh, you know, go late night, late night pod look. Uh, beat ray bills a lot of fun and I yeah feel good. How, how you doing good good yeah a little pot after dark action here uh <laughs> not too bad yeah. but uh yeah man the meta is in such a good spot i feel like we're in august again mm-hmm. it's like i feel like almost any deck that i play like i'm playing a ton of decks like i normally do but i feel like there anyone is good like i can pick up any deck and there's so much variety of uh stuff that's good that it's it's amazing. There's nothing out there that's overtly oppressive. Um, there's nothing that's annoying me. You know, there's no like leech everywhere. There's no hundred pound hundred uh, power blobs every match. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just it's great. I, I, I honestly like right before Loki was uh, this. This is what it feels like when you know when we talk about like oh what was the best meta of all time. You know, everyone's like oh you know when the little movers was good back in August right before Loki. This feels the same to me. Yeah, it, I think it rivals the the little movers meta for sure. I, I guess the little movers deck itself was like really fun, mm. so like that that helped, you know. But uh, I mean, you could play whatever fun deck you want now and <coughs> and rock and roll. So like you know, maybe that's even better. You could even play movers actually. I played uh, some kingpin move. It's it's pretty solid still. Like uh, yeah, it's it's like a that's like a pretty good deck. Well, as I say, didn't you like get an infinity ticket with that? Yeah, yeah, pretty easily. So yeah, it's a, it's a nice deck. Um, I, I didn't didn't make it in Infinite Conquest, unfortunately. Uh, I, I I love the meta a lot right now, but my personal experience with the game, uh, I've I built a little bit of a skill issue. I've been struggling. Um, I burned all my Infinity tickets, and then RNG wise, it took me four keys to get Beat Ray Bill. <laughs> so, oh no, a little bit of a struggle. <laughs> Well, I wanted, um, yeah, I wanted Beat Ray and I wanted uh, uh, Galact- the Galactus variant because that thing's so sick. Mm-hmm. Um, and I ended up getting them in three. I got the uh, I got the tokens first, a thousand tokens, and I was like, all right, swing and a miss. But you know, tokens can't be mad. Then I got Beat Ray on number two, and then I had an internal struggle where I was like, oh man. Really want that Galactus. I was like hoping I missed and got Galactus. Yeah. I'm like, all right. And then I, then I was like, all right, if I get the Elsa variant, I'm not going to be too upset. I'm just going to, you know, go. And then I got the Galactus on the third. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I mentally was prepared with four. Um, so it took me three to get both. I, um, I got to say, variant wise, the Elsa one actually is really sick. It, like, I like it, it. It looks real sick. Like I have the yellow border because I was playing that monkey dump, uh, you know, with Elsa. Yeah. And uh, man, like, it, it like even on the board, it looks it looks real nice. So uh, you know, if Elsa ever gets touched up in the future, get a little bit better. Uh, at least I'll at least I got something, you know, for my for my keys. And yeah, the yeah. Galactus one's just phenomenal. Uh, yeah, they're all yeah. they're all so good. Yeah, so uh, beautiful. Joe, oh Joe, got a great split on it. I got yeah. the God split. I saw that. On yeah, the yeah the it ink, God split. Inked yeah. with the purple crackle. I was like, oh my god, I was happy for him. I was like, you know, what? he deserves it more than anyone to get that a split that good on that card. Yeah. It was great. Um, I got my God split today on Ghost Rider, but I think everyone's going to get their Ghost Rider one, right? Because, you know, you have like 2,000 boosters or whatever, but <laughs> if you grind Conquest. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I got Gold Split with Rainbow Crackle. And, you know, oh. Gold Split on uh, Ghost Rider is real sick because he's got all kinds of yellow, the yellowy stuff, you know? Yeah. Like flames and everything's all yellow. Yeah. And uh, nor- normally I'm not the biggest fan of the Gold Split, but on Ghost Rider, like, it looks really good, so. 
And, oh, yeah, that's Rainbow, sick. Rainbow Crackle. It's like my only Rainbow Crackle card uh, of my whole collection, I think. So. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's fire. It's not the not the shop one. Uh, you know, I, the Robbie Reyes one, I think it's called. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I love that variant. So, yeah. I, you know, next time I play Black Knight, I'm going to be swagged out. I'm excited. That is that is a sick yeah. one. Yeah, Gold Split, I, uh, I only have two Gold Splits in my whole collection. Mm-hmm. And one, and they both have a dumb tome flare that doesn't match, which I'm yeah. pretty mad about. Yeah. I have a, a Spider Man on my favorite Spider Man variant. Mm-hmm. It's a gold split with uh, well, I'll pull it up, whatever. It's that gold look, with look good with Spider Man, yeah. Uh, yeah, but it has green tone flare. Uh yeah, no, the, the background doesn't match. You, you get you get fucked, unfortunately. And I was like, all right, I don't care if it's like you know, tone flare, but this one. Oh yeah, no the the gold split looks. I love nice, this. Though, right? Yeah, it yeah. looks so cool on that variant specifically too. But it's like just a green tone. It gives it and like it's a like, all right. feel, you know. And then I have a, and then I think my only other one is Shang Chi, which I have a bunch of crackles for Shang Chi. But this is my gold gold split on this Peach Moko. Like my, this is my favorite Shang Chi right now. I mean, yeah, I like I a lot. That. There's a lot of Shang Chi's that are good. And a blue tone flare. Come on yeah. now. Yeah, no, you gotta you just gotta keep rolling. All right, this one with the foil and the white crackle. Yeah. It's pretty cool. I like yeah, this. Yeah, that one's pretty sick. I use this. The foil looks pretty good on these, but yeah. And but this, looks like you're, gonna, you're gonna be rolling Peach Momoko still, I think. Yeah, I think I have to. Yeah. Unless uh, we'll see what happens if we're able to choose. I don't think we'll yeah, be able to choose soon, stuff. But. Pretty soon we got the border choosing, so I, yeah, I, it's on the roadmap. So yeah, I'm pretty excited. Um, about that. Beta Ray, let's talk about him a little bit. What do you think? This this card, he's fun, man. He's so much fun. You I don't know, know how good he is, but yeah, uh, I've been having a, a blast with this guy. I think he's pretty good. I think uh, you know maybe maybe we we're too hype on Grandmaster, and maybe maybe not hype enough on Beta Ray, Beat Ray, Beat Ray Bill, I should say, uh, patented at this point. But yeah, uh, he seems sick. I mean, you know, he's like a four power uh, Black Panther, right? So you know, that's how I look at it anyway. So uh, maybe that's wrong, but <laughs> that's how I look at it. He's good. Yeah, he's good. I mean, Black Panther. <laughs> he's. I've never. Uh, I can say like I've never felt bad playing him. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes Thor, you play Thor down. If you don't draw the hammer, you're like, ah, oh, God, it was just a three four. You know, I don't know. Yeah, I, I can't <laughs> comment on that feeling too much because I've only played him in decks that are completely built around him. Uh, I haven't played him in like Dark Hawk or like Lockdown or anything. I've played him in just maximum degenerate. We're getting to 768 power with two Beat Ray Bills on the field because I play Ravona and then I play my Beat Ray and then I uh, Arnim Zola on five to get two more hammers into the deck. Obviously, we got magic on three, you know, so there's seven turns. There's two Beat Rays. I got three hammers. <laughs> also, of course, I'm playing Odin and Wong. So, you know, last turn's going to be Wong, hammer, 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 or... Oh, hammer, 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 Odin, or uh, Wong, hammer, hammer, Grandmaster. And uh, yeah, you, that's how you get a couple 350 to 760 <laughs> power uh, beat rates. And that's how I've been playing it personally. And that deck went nine and two in Conquest. So that was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I was, you kept sending me screenshots. I don't oh, know. I'm, I'm so okay. mad that you lost. I, I was so. Yeah. You beat you beat a Cosmo deck on like the third round somehow. Yeah, it was a she not uh, Cosmo deck. It took took him right out. You know, just gotta just, just had to, you know just ducking and I was just ducking and weaving. You know, the first yeah. three matches he played Cosmo and I lost all of them. And then uh, you know when when we get to like turn four and I haven't seen a Cosmo yet, I'm like whatever, whatever. I'm snapping. I don't I don't <clears> care what I'm playing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I just, he didn't draw it. I got I got a snap. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it was nice. I got, you know, gave him some, you know, one or two cube losses early and then uh, right, and rallied in the, the high stakes to take, take him out. Yeah. And then you lost in the last round, right? I guess, what was it, like a Sandman Cosmo list? <laughs> That's Cosmo Sandman, and a Sandman list. Cosmo Elias. The, there's only three counters and that's all three of He had all three in his deck. Yeah. Because on a, at least the way I like to play this guy is because everybody's playing Shang-Chi, right? 40% play rate, something ridiculous. Uh so I don't, I don't think you could just play out your hammers with beat Ray. I just, I don't think that's like a feasible strategy. You're gonna lose no. at least forty percent of your games because they're just gonna play Shang Chi on it, right? So, like, what are you gonna do? Put an armor on your beat Ray? Like, but I got two beat rays, so you know that doesn't even work for me either. You know, Kyra doesn't work. So you know, and then a lot of decks are playing Shang, uh, Shadow King as well, uh, especially that you know probably best deck in the game, which is Sarah Control right now. Revis is uh, 
deck just got a new uh, addition. We'll talk about that later on the OTAs. But, yeah. um, you know, that deck plays Shadow King and Shang-Chi. So I think the way to play the Beat Ray is to throw priority on purpose. Um, you know, make sure you try really hard to throw priority. When you do that, you lose to Elias. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it's uh, now you could play in three lanes. So, you know, maybe maybe you could dodge the Elias. I dodged it a couple times. I got the guy down to three, uh, you know, cubes. Uh, we were in the last match for three. So, uh, but you know, he had, he had, he got all of it in the last match, you know, Cosmo, uh, you know, Sandman, Elias, just everything was, he didn't play, uh, he ramped in Sandman and then, uh, Elias on six. There was nothing like Dr. Doom, Elias, something like that. There's nothing I could do. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, that's uh, tough. Yeah. The, when you showed me your list, I'm like, oh, this is the, I hope I don't run into Cosmo and pray in five matches list. And then you're like, I beat a Cosmo. I'm like, oh shit. Yeah, but yeah, yeah run well, into you, that. You, that can you can't beat all of the counters in one deck. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. That's it's too bad. There's three lanes to play, so Cosmo, you know, doesn't uh, shut you down. I was thinking too today. T- maybe the deck doesn't need Grandmaster. He's kind of win more, and he's not. You can't even really play him on turn two. So, you know, maybe something in the early game. Like I think, like a, if I took a, him out for Quake, the deck would be a little bit better. Um, do you want to? Do you want to build the deck? You want to show the people? I mean, yeah, let's nine, do it. Nine, nine and two conquest. And I want to point out too. I was just real quick before we build the deck. Uh, you could start if you want. Um, you have a, somewhat of an idea what's in there. You know, Thor, Jane, Odin, all that shit. But um, I was watching a Binks stream today, and he ran into Yo Woody on the ladder. You know, top top player, Yo Woody. Yeah, Yo Woody's great. You know what Yo Woody was playing? What? Wong Panther Zola. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> top 100 player grinding the ladder right now. <laughs> That's great. So don't don't just think I'm I'm a madman, all right? There there's something here. I think he was playing it with Grandmaster and no Odin uh on his list, but on this list, yeah. uh yeah, we're playing yeah, all the degenerate cards. Yeah, you pretty much got them all here. Um yeah, Zola. Okay, you're while well, you're on the high end. I'm trying to remember on my head on my head. Yeah, you're crushing it. Okay, so I mean you could do one drops uh I think you had a Panther too, didn't you? Yeah, Panther. Panther, you need him. Uh, yeah, Sp- you go Spider Ham, uh, Nico, uh, Grandmaster. Oh, yeah. And then uh, Magic is what one, one we're missing. Why don't you say all the cards? Yeah, yeah, we'll go through it. Uh, so uh, at the one cost, it's um, Spider Ham and Nico. I, I originally started with Forge here. The idea was we're going to play like Thor, Forge on three. And then I have a 4-8 beat ray. Um, that almost never happened. And even when it did, I never needed it. Like, if you have two 4-24 beat ray bills on the board, you're probably winning the game. You don't need it to be 8. You don't need it to be 32. You don't need it to be 768. You just, you don't need this. You just, you know, juice them up a couple times and you're good. So uh, switching them up for Spider-Ham to try to hit their Cosmo, try to hit their uh, Elias or their Sandman that's sitting in their hand. I, I think it's good for a disruption. Um, so Spider-Ham, Nico, uh, Grandmaster, Ravona uh, at the two cost. And then at the three is Magic, Thor. Uh, four cost, Wong, Beat Ray, Bill. Uh, five cost, Black Panther, Jane Fonda. And then at the six cost, we got Arnim, Zola, and uh, Odin. So it's a really greedy deck. The idea is we want to make two Beat Ray Bills. But if we can't do two beat ray bills, we can make two Thors. That's pretty good too. Um, you know, you, you can't do. Um, you, you could do two Thors. You could play a uh, Zola, and then you could play a Grandmaster onto your Zola, and now you got three Thors. And, you know, that's pretty good. And then uh, with your three Thors or your three beat rays, you could play you you know Jane Fonda. Get your hammers with playing with Odin or playing with Wong or playing with Odin Wong Grandmaster. All these cards kind of overlap. When you don't draw that plan, you got good old, old reliable Wong Panther Arnim Zola. You know all the all the cards kind of you know they all work together. Uh, so you have kind of three game plans. Uh, Zola is like your key card, but you don't always need Zola because some games you just go turn three Thor, turn four Beat Ray, turn five Jane. You know turn six Hammers plus Odin. That's really 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 good curve. Uh, or Hammers plus Wong or Hammers plus Grandmaster, you know, so you, you don't you don't actually like have to have the the Zola combo, but the Ravona's in there to discount the Zola, 
Also discounts Grandmaster, but that's not really too relevant. But discounts Zola, so you can get them out on five, get the, the hammers in your deck earlier, Jane on six, pop off on seven, uh, you know, with magic. And uh, yeah, it's a re- really, really fun deck, extremely degenerate. And, uh, you know, when it wins, it, it wins real hard. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was showing me screenshots of like 700 in each lane, yeah. like two lanes. I'm like, what the hell is this shit? Yeah, I don't even know. I just play, put the cards down. I'm like, this is going to be a lot. <laughs> 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 that's the best guy. And you're like, well, yeah. that's like the blob days. You're like, I don't know how big he's going to be. I'm just going to throw him down. Just, yeah. He's, he's going to win. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Worthy. <laughs> yeah. Odin. Oh, Odin, that's great! Yeah. What a, what a fun deck is Spider Ham good? Did he do work for you? Yeah, Spider Ham's really good in here. I'm I love him in there, and uh, also just for conquest specifically, right? If you're playing ladder, maybe maybe you could do something else, but uh, like Nebula on ladder, maybe something like that. Just a generic good uh, one cost, but um, on ladder, like just having the information. If I know I hit their Cosmo, their Sandman, Alliath, uh, even uh, you know I hit their Death or their Null, like something like this. Just having that information is really key with this deck because you see what you're curving and then if you hit one of their key cards like i mean it, it's uh you know just to the moon you're going to the moon so uh yeah, yeah. Really, really really fun deck and uh God, I, I, part of me wants to just run it run it back one more time take out grandmaster for quake and just and just see but uh yeah it, it, it could just it, it could lose really bad too like you know it's, it's just a really <laughs> combo deck so <laughs> Gets owned I, by Cosmo, like <laughs> really bad. I think you should do it. <laughs> Run I'm it running back. a gunny T, like it's gonna, it's gonna be a problem. Like I plays Cosmo, <laughs> yeah, and armor, yeah. So you can't Zola, yeah. Oh yeah, God, the Zola, yeah, armor on the Zola, yeah, it doesn't sound fun. But, yeah. yeah. So. But you should that yeah you should run it back. You, you deserve you. I think you were you had a, a infinity avatar stolen from you. If I'm being honest, the fact that you the fact that you got that far with this deck, like you took me on a journey when we <laughs> the last crushing. couple of days. Yeah, <laughs> so like, and at first, I'm like, what a stupid deck you made. <laughs> like it's so it is stupid. It is stupid for sure. <laughs> like, you show me this deck and I was laughing. Yeah. I'm like, how the hell are you winning with this is garbage? <laughs> like a long garbage. <laughs> you kept showing me screenshots and you kept getting like 300 to 700 power. I'm like, what the hell? Maybe it's actually a good deck. My, uh, my, and yeah, I was obviously misplaying a lot with it too. Cause I mean, it's just, like it's just weird plays like Odin Zola, like shit just gets weird. Right. Uh, yeah. even like playing grandmaster on the Odin gets kind of weird sometimes like you know you you have to plan out like you have to make sure your mid lane is like set up properly so you don't like just cock yourself it's like it's yeah weird sometimes uh but yeah like i like uh decks i got I, I don't think wong is a good card i'm gonna throw <laughs> that out there okay but i like decks where you can play wong and the other cards on the same turn you know so the hammers are perfect for this they're they're zero cost so they don't know where you're going to play the Wong. If you just have a Wong sitting there, you're just ax- you're just uh, asking for uh, just play. Please play a tech, you know, please play yeah. this rogue Cosmo Magneto, like, you know, anything like it just, it gets countered by like five different things. So um, I think you got to kind of, you know, slam the Wong with everything else. And, and when you could do that, like then it's, you're really popping off. Yeah, no, this is this looks like a really fun deck. So like I, I'll have to try it at one point. But like the one I'm the one I'm kicking right now that I'm really, really loving is uh the one Kraken Null had the he came up with. Oh yeah. Um is like it. the a monkey dub the list. And uh it's it's Wasp Forge, Kitty Pride, Nico. Um he he had uh Angela, but then uh you know, we talked about it and, and thought Dazzler would be better, so we threw in Dazzler. Mm-hmm. Elsa, Mysterio, Bishop, Hit Monkey, Thor. Beat Ray and Fonda, uh, and the five. So this 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 deck is just like classic classic monkey dump. You know, um, I was beating uh, I was beating um, um, she not decks that like skipped on turn six and went to turn seven. Mm-hmm. Like I was getting forty in each lane, like pretty pretty handily, pretty nice. Um, it's it's just so good. The hit monkey. It's so nice to play hit monkey again. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I really missed that card. You know, him being a two zero was pretty wild, but it's pretty pretty broken but and just having a deck that's like where you can throw him in and he's actually like good and getting up to like 20 power it's it's pretty sweet um <clears throat> obviously you have wasp just to toss down for the hit monkey in the last you know turn uh forge buffs up anything like kitty pride kitty pride is actually pretty sick in this deck yeah like kitty pride gets i've got her to be a one seven a bunch of times mm-hmm. especially with elsa buff with forge buff with nico 
she can get she can get decently big. And you know, at the very least, she's a one energy card that you can throw down in the last turn to make Hit Monkey bigger. Nico is obviously insane. Dazzler is like really good in this list. Like almost always, I fill up every lane. Um, so she's you know a two four is like the absolute worst, and that's just like worst case scenario. You even draw Dazzler like late. And it's like not that big of a deal because you know she's going to be a two four or two six. Yeah. Like uh, I very frequently get her to two eight, uh, and very rarely only have her as two four. I don't think I've ever had her as a two two in this deck, um, unless I retreated. Um, but yeah, <laughs> so she's great, and it's just such good value. Uh, Elsa, oh, yeah, she can't be you know she get she can't get cut by Shadow King, and if they're going to waste an Enchantress on your Dazzler, well then you've won. So yeah, yeah. I mean that's a good trade, and I'll take that trade all day. Uh, yeah, Elsa is actually deck owns Enchantress. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Elsa is really good in this deck too. Elsa gets value, you know, yeah. buffs up your Mysterio, buffs up your Kitty all the time too. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a nice card to have. Uh, and then you have Mysterio to fill everything up. Bishop, who just scales, you know, Hit Monkey is unreal in the last turn. Then you have Thor, Beta Ray, and Jane. Um, so you know, those they're just it's great, and the hammers are just great to dump on the last turn to. Beef up the hit monkey, beef up the bishop. It, it just works so nicely. You fill up the whole board, and they have no idea how much power you're going to throw out at the on, on the last turn, and they they get nervous. Yeah, and you have a couple uh, boosts for beta ray too, right? You have the forge and the nico. So th- in this deck, you're definitely aiming for like a four sixteen uh, beat ray bill here. Uh, that's kind of the goal. Try boost them up to four eight, and then play a hammer, get them up to a four sixteen. Like that's awesome. And and to your point, kid. I mean, yeah, I played this deck a bit too and yeah you're you could get like a a 35 and a 40 lane you know mm-hmm. uh in in a, like a she not game like pretty pretty handily and dazzler feels like she's pretty much pretty reliably a two six like yeah very rarely uh this is she have two four and then once in a while you get her a two eight which is really nice or you know throw her on the elsa lane she's a 210 it's also pretty cool uh but um i think when kraken null made this deck it was before the dazzler uh buff you were saying um or the dazzler change um it was like older like he made it like january early. 1st yeah so i i don't i don't know if dazzler was what she was when he made the deck so i don't think um, so yeah I, so he had angela there but i think dazzler just going to be bigger than angela like pretty much like all the time like you know you have to play on angela four times to even get to like the the average of dazzler which is like a two six right so yeah no exactly yeah and, and i think uh nina actually posted this she's like oh this is my she's like thanks kraken all is my favorite day one deck for him mm-hmm. and then like you know uh, i think he responded in that thread and then i was like hey what do you think about dazzler instead of the angela mm-hmm. he's like hey that's actually a great idea i gotta go i gotta test that and i sent him a screenshot and stuff too okay. you know so because yeah. it is it is i think i think honestly i think it's just strictly better than angela right now yeah. Like I don't think there's any scenario where Angela is better than Dazzler mm-hmm. in yeah, this deck. Yeah, Angela's a really bad card right now. It, it, it's okay. She was crazy for a while, but yeah, she's she's awful right now. And you know it is what it is. Like she's just a, like you wouldn't put Angel in your deck. You wouldn't put Quicksilver. Don't put Angela. Like she's she's with those guys. So you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I I do like what you said about Kitty Pride. It's like playing this deck it's like oh man like you you miss how like fun this card is like Kitty yeah i know like, yeah it, it's fun playing giddy pride she's an awesome card and uh yeah she's here just to proc uh bishop and to for an extra card for a hit monkey i mean that's that's why she's here you know she's here to bo- boost up your other cards and obviously uh just abuse elsa to the to the max so she's yeah. here to enable your your other three uh kind of little little scaling cards but which is nice because then when you're on turn six and you have Hit Monkey, a one seven Kitty Pride or like a one six Kitty Pride or whatever, mm-hmm. and then you have like, you know, Mysterio and two hammers. Yeah, that's like a shit ton of power that yeah. they have no idea. And then and then and then your Dazzler is going to get buffed too. Mm-hmm. And then you can choose how much you're going to buff up your Dazzler, right? Yeah. If it's not going to be fully buffed, mm-hmm. so it's like you know, and then people, I think people a lot of times get afraid of the Beat Ray lane. Yeah. So then you just throw Hit Monkey in like another lane, and then you, you can even split up Thor, Hit Monkey, and Beat Ray in three different lanes. And even if you have Bishop out there too, he can be like instead of the Thor. There's just like threats in each lane, and it's like yeah. it's hard for people to keep up. Yeah, you could legit go forty on one lane if you, if you want to, you know. Like if yeah, you, if you focus on one lane, you you get up to thirty five forty with this deck. So 
Yeah, and yeah. the only thing that screws this deck is locations, like mm-hmm. unplayable locations. Yeah, space thrown. Yeah, all that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah. like like that yeah. stuff is like because you just want to dump everything, so that's tough if that happens. Yeah, like Necrotia is not fun too. Yeah, Luke's bar, uh, rickety bridge, all this stuff. It, yeah, no no bueno for this deck. Yeah, well, Necrotia and stuff's not that bad because you can just put like one scaling thread in there, and true. it's not like yeah. horrible. Yeah, I guess you, you know you would just not put your Elsa in that lane. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you could put a bishop in there, or you can just like at the end of the game throw a you know a three fifteen hit monkey that they have no no clue. Yeah, true. You know, so it, it it's not those aren't that bad. It's just like Sanctum or like you know Crimson Cosmos, the ones where you like you can't play Space Throw, and it's like yeah. all right, well, yeah. But yeah, yeah, I mean this this is this is like the you know one of the, one of the most fun decks I've been playing the last couple of days. But really, like honestly, I could play. It anything like this is like junk dark hog dark hawk's back yeah i mean dark hawk's just like a really really good time it's a really good deck right now <laughs> like uh you know i talked about it on decks that i don't like on our last pod with gunny t there where you know it's just this dark hawk card is insane like <laughs> it's just ridiculous uh, <laughs> now old blob is more ridiculous old loki's more ridiculous old elsa is more ridiculous uh, old Elias is more ridiculous. All these cards are just way better than than Darkhawk. But now that they've all been nerfed, <laughs> here yeah. we are. And uh, yeah, Darkhawks are really good. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, now after Blob got nerfed too, especially. Yeah, I said that was the first one I said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's less Blob. I mean, Annihilus Bounce mm-hmm. is a sick deck right now. Yeah. Blo- even Thanos Blob is yeah, still really great, mm-hmm. great deck, mm-hmm. and fun. Like literally anything. You stupid your little movers deck. Yeah, this deck's really good. <laughs> you want to go over? You want to go over this one a little bit? Sure. Yeah. So because um, this one actually, I played a, a couple conquest matches with this. Like not Infinity. I haven't done any Infinity yet because mm-hmm. it's not the last day, obviously. And I, you know, it's not a hella deck, so yeah, it's not true. gonna be my, not my style. <laughs> sure. um, but yeah, this one was fun. Uh, it's a, a Nebula, Nightcrawler, Craven, Jeff, Kingpin, Silk, Juggernaut, Polaris, Spider Man, Miles Morales, Arrow, and Magneto. Yeah, so I was, I was, I tried all kinds of cards in here. Um, you know, I tried Tech. I had Shang Chi, like instead of like Miles, for example. Like um, Shang Chi is really awkward to to play in this deck. You really like. You really want to be playing like arrow potentially on five or moving cards on five and magneto on six like you really want to be doing that so there's no there's no zabu there's no like like clean way to play shang chi your shang chi in this deck is juggernaut juggernaut you get acquire priority and juggernaut's gonna like win you games in this deck i mean you're playing it on the lane where you know they're not going to want to play on your craven lane because your craven lane is going to be ridiculously huge like uh your kingpin lane is going to be huge so those are, you know, all game you move, you move, you play down your Craven, you play your Kingpin. You can separate them. Um, I don't think you need to play them together personally. Um, I, I like the idea of separating them, and then it gives you like a lot more freedom that way. And then you put your uh, Nebula in the other lane, so like your Nebula's in your non-Craven, non-Kingpin lane. So they're starting to play cards in, in the Nebula lane. You go, oh, no, thank you, Spider-Man, move that out of there. Polaris, move it to, like, I know you have to play here. Uh, I need a Silk proc. I can't proc it myself. I put my Silk on the Nebula. Thank you for moving my Silk for me. And uh, you're just kind of controlling the entire flow of the game. It's uh, really nice because, like you said, I mean, Darkhawk's really good. And um, you can just move all their shit around with Magneto. Like, there's all three and four. The whole deck is three and four cost cards, right? So a lot of decks are just base Zabu and a bunch of four cost cards right now. So... Uh, Magneto goes yeah. real hard in this deck, and um, yeah, they don't they don't like when they you move their Miss Marvel around, you know, or uh, and, then, and, and it's very easy to acquire priority. You acquire priority, you play Jug in the lane that uh, you're you're winning in, but like you're barely winning in the, in that lane. You, you know, you know they're gonna play there. You put a Jug there, he bumps everything into your Craven or your Kingpin, and it's a GG. And it's really fun. Yeah, I uh, I the new Kingpin's a ton of fun i mean this deck just when things are moving all around the board it's hilarious it's fun yeah, yeah. uh like i loved i loved playing like you know like a one drop and then a kingpin and like they play one drop and then you polaris their one drop into the kingpin lane it's just it's just such a slap in the face of them i feel it's just demoralizing yeah. like yeah. it's just hilarious it's like almost like uh it just makes me laugh every time and, and it's just, it's fun 
Uh, King Arrow Harris is just a beautiful bread and butter, you know, just like, like uh, yeah, feels really good. Two, three curve. <laughs> yeah. And if not that Craven too, like Craven yeah. Polaris feels really good yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but also uh, Arrow, Arrow actually felt real good. Mm -hmm. There's a few times where if you get priority, like they're playing Miss Marvel on four, you can yank their Miss Marvel out of the lane. Oh, yeah. You know, if that's the last card they played on turn four, mm -hmm. it's great. So, like, yeah, if you, if you, once you get the hang of like the way the new Arrow works, um, She's awesome. And then a 5'9 body is like nothing to scoff at, right? Like it's a lot of power. Yeah. And you yoink her into the Craven and Kingpin lanes, you know, get that extra value. And uh, that's great. Yeah, exactly. And then you do that. <laughs> the Kingpin just takes his tax. <laughs> yeah, so this lane, like, not, or this deck, not only, like, it's not a tier one S tier deck or anything by any means, you know, it's probably like a tier two deck, but like feels you still win. Still tier two ish. Yeah. For me. Yeah. You still win with it. And it's, uh, and it's, it's just a ton of fun. Mm hmm. You know, there's a lot, a lot of moving pieces. Yeah. But yeah. So I mean, like, just trying to look at my, uh, my all my um, my decks here. Like all, all of them, I could play. You know, obviously, Gunny T's deck. You should bring uh, up the Revis. You should bring up the Revis, the one on the bottom left. I was going to, yeah, because we'll get into this during the OTAs. I think yeah. this is probably the deck to beat. Um, with a with a sub, you know, we'll talk about the sub. Yeah. Later, but. Yeah. But re I think I think right now Sarah, the Sarah deck is you know Sarah Control, um, Sarah Tech, whatever the hell you want to call it, is going to be the best deck in the game, probably or, or one of them. Uh, this one just like Revis's deck straight up is Shadow King, Zabu, Lizard, Maximus, Killmonger, Mobius, Gladiator, Shang Chi, Miss Marvel, Enchantress, Sarah, and Legion. Mm -hmm. like, if you want Infinity Borders, I mean this is probably the deck you play in Infinity Conquest. Mm -hmm. it's, you'd be hard pressed to. It just counters everything, yeah. you know. Um, the, yeah, Lambi recently had a three hundred man tournament, um, and the, the and the guy who won, uh, I got I forget his name. Uh, so sorry, sorry, buddy. You know, if you're listening, but uh, <laughs> uh, he he played this deck, but I think he was playing like Jeff instead of Lizard. I want to say I don't think there was a Lizard in his deck. I think um, you're right. I think yeah, it was Jeff. I think it was just Jeff over Lizard, and I think everything else is the exact same. Um, you know, I could, I could be off by one, one other card, but it's basically, you know, we got to give Revis the credit anyway. I mean, you know, he, he's been playing this for months now, right? So, uh, yeah, like Dr. You know, Pla Dr. Plague. Okay. Yeah. Dr. Plague won the tournament. So, yeah, shout yeah. out to that guy. Shout out to the guy Destroy who got second with Dracula Destroy. That's pretty crazy. D Grandmaster yeah. Dracula Destroy deck, uh, second place in a 300 man tournament. So, that guy's a fucking Chad. David. <laughs> His name's David. David is a Chad, man. Definitely Chad a Chad. Yeah, I gotta change his name to Chad Beat or something. But anyway, yeah. that's great. <laughs> but yeah, this this deck, it, I mean, this has been one of the top decks in in the whole meta. And then in the you know pre OTA changes today, uh, High Evo was kind of like running shit for a little bit. You know, there was a two three day period there where people figured out, oh my god, like Luke Cage is like is really bad. Like let's just play Infliction High Evo. <laughs> And uh, I think it was the number one graded uh, deck on untapped.gg. Um, just like a standard Infliction uh, high Evo deck. Uh, but, you know, t times times might change a little bit. But I, I have a feeling they might also stay the same. But we, yeah, we'll get to that when we talk about OTAs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Affliction, I think I think because, uh, well, Cozy put out a video with one, right? So I think that's probably why a bunch of people started playing it. Yeah. But the best uh, Grandmaster deck was like a toxic Grandmaster deck, right? And that, that had a bunch of affliction and abomination and all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah. And I mean, those are just, it, it's, I kind of like that. Like, it's nice to see high, like some high Evo decks do, do well. That, that's another deck we didn't mention. Like it's, yeah, people are just playing high Evo and it's just a good deck. Feels really which good. Is, which yeah. is cool because, you know, before, like a month ago, you try to play high Evo, it's like, you just get shit on if you're not playing well, in, in she not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The power of your info not. <laughs> yeah. Cy Cyclops like sucks when, when you yeah. put a blob in that lane, mm -hmm. you know? So it's, it was nice. It's just, there's a, there's a whole range of decks that you can just play right now, which is like, it's so, it's so much fun. So like, just take advantage now before everything gets fucked up in a couple of weeks, probably. Mm -hmm. <laughs> released all about, these broken cards. <laughs> you're talking about Hit Monkey. I think you know Hit, Hit Monkey could be back on on the menu when we got you know the Black Swans coming. <laughs> yeah, a Hit Monkey already is on the menu with Beat yeah. Ray. We could like go to the top of the menu, you know. <laughs> oh God, yeah, we're gonna get fucking uh, three thirty Hit Monkeys. It's gonna be wild. Yeah, we'll see. 
Yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's talk, let's let's get in the OTAs. I mean, the meta uh, final thoughts. The meta is amazing right now. It's so good. Uh, I hope I hope not not much changes because it's just it's amazing. Yeah, and I think uh, you know, speaking of OTAs, I think Second Dinner kind of agrees with us with these with these OTAs, right? <laughs> yeah. So their their data must be telling them that hey, we don't want to we don't want to mess this up too much. You know, we're not going to go in there and uh, just make crazy changes. And you know, they're not they don't seem like they want to impose their meta onto us. You know, they're happy with us just figuring it out. And you know, there's a bunch of different decks. Not nothing's getting too out of control. So they just decided let's let's buff um, some cards that are, are dog shit, and uh, you know let's get let's give them some big buffs. And I th- I do like that a lot. Um, I love the overall macro idea of this OTA. Just like I love the last one where they said, hey, like we got to hit like blob has to be hit like really harshly, and they did that. But just like the last one, there are some very weird changes in this one as well. The head scratching, like Viper esque, uh, you know. I, I don't, I don't quite get half of them. <laughs> same, same as the last one. I mean, you know, there's just like just strange changes. Uh, but I, I do love overall what they're doing, and I think right now, like uh, like Glenn and the boys over and and gals and everybody over there uh, are doing a great job at, uh, on the balance team of Marvel Snap. So yeah, we got to shout out to them. They're doing a phenomenal job. The oh, team feels really fun to play. Right? Yeah, ever since the blob uh the blob change, it's been it's been amazing. It's been so good. Um there's like in this OTA there's one there's one head scratcher for me. And I kinda called it to you last week. I'm like yeah, this was they're probably gonna I'm like they're probably gonna fucking touch this card. Yeah, you, but, I don't know how you called it, but yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll, we'll talk about that. Um but there, there's only one kind of head scratcher, like really head scratcher for me. But I kind of get what they're trying to do with the other ones. But mm-hmm. I mean, let, let's let's get into the OTAs here. Let's see. The meta game has been in an excellent shape for the last couple of weeks, with a lot of different decks enjoying success and many new cards spawning fascinating innovations. We want to keep that going with today's OTA. So our focus is largely on improving underused cards. Which, just like you said, I. This was so good. I was so happy when I saw it. I was so nervous for the OTA this morning mm-hmm. because I just didn't want them to fuck up this nice meta. This is such fun meta that we've been yeah, having sure. because usually they'll like they'll nuke cards to impose their own meta and kind of thing, yes. which like sometimes is necessary. But sometimes you're like, oh come on guys, and then they create new problems. But mm-hmm. I think this is not going to change too much, and it might open the door to some other stuff maybe, and we'll see. Mm-hmm. Um, and just so you know. Just so people know, uh, the reason why a bunch of us were nervous was because uh, I think there was a post last week or a few days ago or something where, you know, someone's like, oh, what do you guys think about Destroy and Destroy's metrics? You know, and Glenn was like, well, yeah, Destroy is like the best deck in the game right now, like by our metrics and, you know, might need to be touched or something. And so we we're just like, come on, like the, it's let Destroy be good. Like it's not that good. Yeah. Like it's not, it's not oppressive. Like it's not like. I don't ever play a destroy. I'm like, oh shit, here's a destroy, you know? Mm-hmm. Like I do that. I used to do that with Loki. I used to do that with Blob Thanos. So I'm like, oh, come on now. Mm-hmm. But like uh, destroy is like, whatever. You can always beat destroy, you know? Yeah. Um. So we were just nervous. That, like, you know, they're going to ruin destroy. And then that'd probably set up a cascade of events that would just like ruin the meta game probably. <laughs> <laughs> um. So first one, good old Luke Cage. Mm-hmm. Right after kick off Black History Month here. We got the go. Luke Cage protecting the neighborhood. Give him a nice little buff. I like yeah. it. Um, he's a was a two three ongoing Your cards. You know can't have their power reduced. Now he's a three four. Your cards can't have their power reduced. Global. True. So uh, he was a two three just in the lane. Now he's a three four global. Which mm-hmm. again, I know I've said this before, and I know it's the direction that they've said they wanted to do. But I really like this. How like two cost cards affect one lane. And if you want a global effect, it's got to be a three. Mm-hmm. So I really, I really like this change, um, you know, because it's gonna, it's a cost to put them in your deck, you know, like it, you know, like a, playing a three energy card is like, you know, not like a two. Like it's take takes up a lot of uh, effort on your part, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think he's, I think he's, I think he's statted very well. Like his effect is not as good as Mobius, I don't think. And Mobius is a three three. So they made him a three four. That's my like logic. So I don't know. I love it. I think it's great. Yeah, I think it's a great change. It's cool that you know Luke Cage was totally dead card before this, and uh, except in Cerebro three only. 
Um, and now, uh, yeah, I, Cerebral 3 might be dead, by the way. <laughs> There's a lot of people that are pissed. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not pissed. I, I, I do love Cerebral 3, don't get me wrong. But <laughs> listen, if you're a true Cerebral player, you play where the numbers go. We we adapt, you know, they release they release a uh, five power card, we're C5 now. We release a good two power card, we're C2 now. It does, you know, it doesn't... And uh, and I did play a little bit of C4 today. I sent you a screenshot of that too. <laughs> but, uh, uh, C, C4 is like is C, feels decent. Um, you know, there's good cards in there. Like Miss Marvel is a four drop card. You know, uh, Captain Marvel is really good as a buff card. But anyway, I want to get off on a C4 tangent. It's another another uh, you know random rogue deck. But, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, this change is is really cool. I, I did. Have you messed around? Have you tried playing this card yet, kid? Today? No, no. I played. I, I, I played too crazy of a day. I, I didn't really play at all. I played some high Evo man thing hazmat, you know, uh, the affliction type of deck. But you know, I thought, why not get a little little Luke Cage, uh, you know, man thing action? You know, makes sense. And now that I I can do it, you know, you can play Luke Cage anywhere. It doesn't have to be in the man thing lane. You know, it's it, you know, I can just play him on curve and play the man thing where I want to play it. He feels kind of awkward to play, like three four. Yeah, Luke Cage is. It doesn't feel great. I'm not gonna like it, and I do think like you know we're looking at this in theory. Three five Luke Cage would be broken, right? Like that sounds broken to me. Uh, that sounds a little bit too good. Like three five is a premium stat line, and you get a powerful effect like Luke Cage. But we gotta remember, like this is his effect is probably more niche than Mobius. You know, uh, especially with just all the Sarah Zabu stuff that you know that's going around the meta right now, like. You know, Mobius and decks like that that like are running Sarah Zabu or both. Uh, Mobius is a lot of value, but um, Luke Cage like it's like, do you run into a high Evo deck? And then if the answer is no, you just got like a three four, and it's just you know, is, is it worth it for you know minus locations? Like, it, I don't know. It, it, it still yeah. might not be a great card. Is I don't want to have like a bold take or anything, but uh, you know, I think I think this card might be kind of bad. But I, I know it could be totally wrong. No, I agree with you. He's yeah. a tech card. This is how tech cards are supposed yeah, to feel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're not supposed to be broken. They're supposed to be like nice cards that kind of feel awkward sometimes that they're not doing the thing they're supposed to do. True. But if something gets too ridiculous, like if High Evil starts taking over the meta, you just put Luke Cage in your deck and you're crushing them. Yeah. With for three power, you just win. I guess I guess what I what I mean is like, you know, how often it comes up. Like for example, let me compare it to another three four tech card. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kyra, right? If yeah. I'm playing a deck with a bunch of ones and a bunch of sixes, like Thanos, Lockjaw, for example, right? Kyra, I feel like she comes up a lot. <laughs> like, you know, you get any, like, there's so many destroy locations. Uh, everybody's playing Shang-Chi in their deck, you know? So, like, that Kyra is just, like, value for days, you know, if you're playing that type of a deck or you're playing a, a Shinot deck, right? Luke Cage... It just, I don't know how much is realistically going to come up. Like, I Evo is going to have to, like, take over for this card to matter, I think. Uh, but, you know, who knows? But I guess that's, you know, that's why it's there, right? In case it does take over. And I think it kind of was, and that's what they were thinking when they when they made this change. Yeah, or in case some, well, because he was dog shit at a 2-3, only one lane. Like, who the, one, who the fuck's going to play that? Yeah. Like, who want? At least it's like better. A, yeah, it's better than the 2-3 on one lane, for sure. So, it's a it's a buff, and it's, it's, I think all the cards they buffed, they made good choices to buff all of these cards. It's just the actual changes themselves. I, I, I'm not uh, scratching my head on this one. I think it's. I think it's great. I, I just wanted to point that out. I played it a yeah. day and it didn't not did not feel very good to, in my deck. It felt like yeah, I was it's not losing, losing me cubes. Yeah, it's not. A, it's not a Luke Cage meta right now. You know. Yeah. You probably don't need it. Yeah. So I, I'm sure people will find a, a use for him. You know, or they'll get thrown in like you know you throw in one of these Sarah Tech decks if you know there's a little bit of more high Evo. Take out like Killmonger, put him in instead, or something. You know, uh, he's a rock star in C four, like one hundred percent. Though I, I will say that. Yeah, <laughs> yes. like just the, the deck doesn't work without him. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. <laughs> but I, anyways, I like I like this change. Yeah. Get him global. Get him to three. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm I'm good. Uh, I think they thought they nerfed this card, uh, Hulkbuster. Um, three five now is a two three. Um, I see their logic. Uh, I I like I. That is an okay change. This is the change that I I told you like a week ago that I'm like I bet there when like there's there's whispers of destroy being nerfed. I'm like listen, destroy is so good, right? The destroy is good right now. 
There's no need to change destroy. I'm like, if they want to, if they want to nerf Hulkbuster, fine. That's a, that's the only change I'll be excited with. And then you said X23, and then they nerfed Hulkbuster. Yeah, and I said an actual good card. That, you know, if you're trying to nerf a deck, you nerf <laughs> one of their actual cards that are good, right? I don't think they needed to nerf destroy at all. I think destroy is fine. Yeah. Um. So their logic here was uh uh the strongest destroy deck was Deadpool, and this just makes Deadpool um less power basically overall uh it's like less high rolly on the on the deadpool um but a lot of people are saying that hey this just is like a nice curve now for deadpool <laughs> deadpool on one then hulkbuster on two then like carnage <laughs> it's yeah. like it it works nicely now for him yeah so is this gonna be a nerf to destroy i don't know is it a lot of the destroy decks didn't even have hulkbuster too all the deadpool destroys you know um I don't know. I think I think it's a cool change. I like I just I like when there's like weird two drops like this because then you could throw like I seen someone uh, post on X today like oh they had like a Nimrod Shuri Nimrod deck they're like oh you can Psylocke on three Nimrod on four Hulkbuster and something on five or Hulkbuster Carnage and then Venom you know it's like mm-hmm. you get a bunch of like eight power Nimrods everywhere it's kind of cool yeah yeah. Um... So I don't know. I know. It's a weird. It's a weird change, but whatever. I just think it, this is this is this one's a head scratcher for me. I yeah. don't know what the hell they're doing. Like what the fuck they're doing, but whatever. Okay. So yeah, this is a this is a head scratcher to me too. And um, my take on this is okay. This these OTAs, Marvel Snap. Okay, we got like five hundred <laughs> cards, right? Four hundred cards. Some of the cards are dog shit, and some of the cards are really good, like probably too good, you know, like Dark Hawk, you know, these, these kind of cards. Why are we touching Hulkbuster? <laughs> Hulkbuster was a, like basically perfectly balanced card, you know, like three, five Hulkbuster also as a five, way more interesting. Um, you have the multiple <laughs> man in the Hulkbuster. That's a eight power uh, multiple man. You could destroy it, do a Phoenix Force. Ghost Spider, you know, you totally, b- b- that line's just gone now. People are uh, pissed about that. Yeah, it, which, why, like, why, you know, I don't care. I'm not, a, I'm not a Phoenix Force player, but I feel for these people because they're catching a stray for no fucking reason. <laughs> no fucking reason. Okay, if I was to say what are the top, like, eight destroy cards, Hulkbuster's not one of them. Hulkbuster's a flex card in destroy. A lot of top destroy decks don't even play Hulkbuster. Uh, he's he's a straight up flex spot, just like Taskmaster, uh, just like Arnim Zola. He's right there with those cards in destroy. Their core cards are Nico, Forge, uh, X twenty three, Null, Death. Um, what's the other one drop? Deadpool, Venom, Carnage. Dead, yeah, Deadpool, Venom, Carnage, Deathlock. Also uh, flex card. So I would say this would be like nerfing Deathlock. You know, like why would you nerf Deathlock or why would you nerf Hulkbuster? Like. And then Hulkbuster is, is in other decks like moving. You want to play it on the multiple man. Like, so I, I really don't like this change. I think Hulkbuster 2 3 is fine. You know, I don't think a 2 3 Hulkbuster is like a shit card or anything. But like, why? The, the 3 5 1 was cool. Big buffs are kind of cool because then they can kind of snowball. Like, I think that's pretty cool. And I don't know why they would take that out of the game. Like when it's it's, it's like a literal flex card and destroy. Uh, you know, if you want to hit destroy, you could have hit you could have uh, hit any of the other cards that actually matter. Um, and but maybe like you said, they shouldn't hit destroy. But then don't hit Hulkbuster. Go buff one of the other dog shit cards in the game. There's still there's still plenty of them. Like it's a massive pile over there you could choose from. So, <laughs> uh, I feel like this is just wasted uh, manpower. This is why I don't like changes like this. Same with the you know Spider Man. Or Spider Ham, Red Skull, change Red Skull three times, like you know, just all this shit, like Viper. Let's change Viper twice, you know. Oh three, fuck! Two three Viper yeah. was was great. We had a two three Viper. It's just a fine balanced card, you know. Three five Hulkbuster is a balanced card, like you know, it's if you just play it naked on the board, it sucks, you know. So you have to actually do something with it to make it good, and that's what made it balanced. It, this was this card was never even close to broken. So I, I don't know, I don't know what they're thinking here. Yeah, I I agree with you. And I, the only reason why I'm happy, or I'm kind of not happy, but like don't care that much about this change, is that I'm happy they didn't touch destroy because I don't think destroy was that good. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a good deck, but I don't think it's like needs to be nerfed. Like it's not it's not a needs to be nerfed kind of deck. 
his deck that's good. There's always like there's always has to be a good deck. There's always yeah. going to be a quote best deck, right? Um, but you know, it's just the problem is when these best decks become oppressive. That's when you're like, and you're, they're everywhere. That's when like you have to start nerfing stuff. Yeah, that's not the case right now. The meta is wide open. I agree with so, you. And, and by the way, nobody's playing armor right now as well. It's just another thing to point out. Yeah, like, play armor. Armor, there, the armor just doesn't exist in, right now. So you know, if you really want to beat the strike, put armor in your deck. It, you know, it's easy wins. Yeah, Safety Blade did that in his Loki deck. He does. He puts. He puts armor in his Loki deck for Infinity Conquest. Like day one, he posts. He's like, "Okay, I got my Infinity uh, uh, border with uh, with this deck. You know, now I can try other decks because it's like, yeah." And they always like caveats. Armor's in there for all the destroy. That's in. Uh, yeah. That's in Conquest all the time. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I guess we'll. Uh, I mean, a two is interesting because you can pair it with a lot more stuff now. Sure. Yeah. I messed around with it a bit and move it. It was interesting, but yeah, know. like with Human Torch and stuff, yeah. like it might be kind of cool. Yeah, because you could do, um, you you know, you could do the multiple man uh, Hulkbuster on the same turn, you know, on three. All right, so or uh, Four. sorry, uh, no, you can't do that. You could do a Hulkbuster Ghost Spider on the same turn. Uh, so you could yeah. do like a multiple man, then next turn you could do Hulkbuster Ghost Spider. It's kind of interesting, you know, two sixes. Yeah. This is kind of cool because this opens up the door to move decks now a little bit because they always want less energy cards, right? So like, yeah, yeah, with torch with it with anything. It's kind yeah, of, but I think you want the five. I think you want the five on the move decks ultimately. I think you want it in the, in the for deer no. deck too. You know, I mean, maybe I, I don't know the, the three costs in move decks is too awkward. Mm-hmm. It's already like you, you can't. Phoenix Force, Phoenix Force, it's- no, no, that's fine. Yeah. But Phoenix Force, you don't Hulkbuster the multiple man and then you Phoenix Force it. That's like a backup plan, Hulkbuster. You could. No, you just you play the you play the thing, you, yeah, you play yeah. the multiple man, you destroy it, and then you, you have Phoenix on Force. Curve, of course, but I'm just saying yeah. if, if you didn't uh, draw your destroy cards, you know? You could just yeah. play him a Hulkbuster. And you could uh Phoenix on four and you know, with a ghost spider or Doctor Strange or something, you know, make some trick. Yeah, I've seen the old uh, multiple yeah. man uh into Hulkbuster three or eight eight multiple men and then people pull it into their Hercules and it's like they Phoenix force still Pete. <laughs> it's like a multiple men everywhere. I'm like, Oh damn. Yeah. 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 This is one that's like, I don't know. I, I'm, I can't, I can't be upset about it because I'm, I'm just not. No, it's just like, I'm it's not like upset a, about either. I just, I feel like it's just, a I'm, waste of time. I'm confused, but yeah, maybe it'll be more fun. Cause it's, it's less energy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Heimdall. This is, you know, thank God. Six, mm-hmm. eight. Now he's a six, nine. Mm-hmm. Good change. Doesn't get cucked by Shang-Chi, and he's like, you know, yeah, move. Move getting some love. I like it. This is the prime candidate for Shang-Chi. Now hits 10s. Like, Heimdall was like, should have been the first guy on the list, and I'm, I'm happy they got to him pretty quick. So Yeah, did uh, we say that? I think we said, like... <laughs> I, heard, I, I definitely heard Cozy say it. I don't know if we said it. Uh, uh, I know Cozy said it uh, months ago, I remember. Like, come on, Heimdall. We need the Heimdall. Come on. It's like, all right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so I, I, I at least shout out Cozy for sure. But I don't know if it, you know we said it too or uh, if you said it. But yeah. Um, awesome change. And, uh, you know, he needed it, I think. Yeah. And like, it's better than a 6'10. You don't want him to get shang chi Yeah. Although you're usually playing on 6 anyway. So it's not that big of a deal. Like, to have to be a hero shang chi And if you get, and if you like lose to a hero shang chi where they soul read you, you can't really get that mad about that anyway. You got to respect that play. It's true. Ultimately, he would probably prefer like a 10 power, you know, but then is 610 Heimdall too good? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, no, this is a good change. I'm not complaining. This is a great change. I re- I'm really happy about this. Mm-hmm. Um, this one, uh, probably a little bit of a head scratcher. Spider-Man 2099. <laughs> uh, I, I respect what they're trying to do. I respect that I'm reading Spider-Man 2099 here for the first time yeah. in a balanced patch. For sure, for sure, yes. Okay, I'll stay. I guess put that out there. Yeah, I guess. Well, yeah, round of applause. Yeah, At least we about, quote unquote buffed Spider-Man 2099. It's yeah. about yeah. fucking time that we see this card. Yeah, who's been a piece of shit card? Yeah, really cool card, yeah. but just a big piece of shit for what six months now? How long has this card been out? <laughs> Holy fuck, man. Yeah. So it was a four six and now it's a five nine. So I mean I gotta look I gotta look to the X for uh you know the um all the move players on there and look at their you know look at their uh, opinions. A lot of them are kind of mad. 
and they say, oh, that looks like the first time they touched Spider-99 was to nerf him. I didn't know he needed a nerf. Yeah. Um, so maybe it's a nerf. I'm Maybe I'm a little bit more optimistic with this. I don't know. Maybe I'm wearing my rose-colored glasses today. But uh, yes, and I, I know I just said that like for move, it's much better to have lower energy. <laughs> I just said that, so I'm sounding hypocritical now. But I mean, 5'9", let's just say that's a good body. That's a nice, for sure. fat body to be on there. Yeah. Okay? That's number one. Number two, Spider-Man 99 can only kill one thing. Mm-hmm. So you only have to move him once. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you like really fuck up your gear too much to play like a three drop and then a Iron Fist on four. Mm-hmm. Or like on turn six, you don't play Heimdall, but you play this on five and you play a Ghost Spider. And then like a, uh, I don't know, like a Doctor Strange yeah. Juggernaut or something, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. um, to have that kind of a weird uh, turn six play. Maybe he'll be good. If it, you know, five nine, then he destroys one thing. He's like a five fifteen, and it could it could be a decent card. Or maybe it's just that he's going to be a big clunky idiot that doesn't make any lists and is not good. Yeah. So I don't know. That 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 definitely and could just be worse than a four six, like people are saying. Yeah. That definitely could be possible because now you can't even zabu him. But you're not going to zabu a move list. I haven't seen that. That's just no. craziness. No. Yeah. There's not not enough, not enough force, but. Uh, yeah, I agree with the I agree with the ex Twitter boys. I mean, uh, first thing I did when I saw the OTAs was put a move deck together. <laughs> play some yes. move. I, I didn't play Hercules in it. Uh, you know, no need. This thing only kills you know one card anyway. Uh, but yeah, um, I, I don't I don't get this at all. Um, Hercules did not need to be a four seven. Like that made no sense. That buff would have been perfect for twenty ninety nine. 20, why not make 2099 the 4 7? Like, he should be the 4 7, not Hercules. You want a premier 4 drop for the move archetype 4 7, or even maybe 4 8 2099. Like, that's the that's the play to make. This this thing at a 5 cost, it, it feels really bad to play. Um, I don't like it. Yes, 9's a, like a nice big body, but there's so much you want to be doing on turn 5. And I, I played him a ton, you know, and look, I won some games, but. Uh, yeah, I think I would have been much better off just playing other move cards instead of this thing, or you know, some sort of tech maybe. Uh, maybe you know, you have like Enchantress in there instead of him. Like, who knows? But it's definitely I, I don't think I don't think this is it. Yeah, I'm you know sure. what? Oh, now that I think about it and hear you talk, like yeah, for move you want to you want to be doing things on five. Mm-hmm. You want to be playing a few cards and getting your things moving around and buffing things. You don't want to just throw a clunky card down. Yeah, that's shit. Because six might be just like just Heimdall, or maybe if you're a Magneto boy, you know, just Magneto. Like, you know, you have to set up for your Heimdall, right? So, uh, I feel like if you play this card, like if you're playing him down on five, like you cannot Heimdall on six. Well, you can. I mean, it's well, you can, but I mean, like you have eighteen power, right? And he kills something. But you have no setup beforehand. Like you, you have like your first four turns need to be setting up for like some like weird weird turns, weird move stuff on on the last you know couple of turns. Yep. And yeah, this is just clunky as hell, huh? I I, I want to try him. I want to try him and see. Yeah, I mean, God, it just I, he had some good snipes. Like uh, I sniped a death. You know, <clears throat> it felt great. You know, the animation is pretty cool. The web comes out and goes poof and kind of mashes into it. It's yeah, pretty, it's pretty cool. Yeah. He is a really cool card. Yeah, move. Yeah, yeah moves. Moves tough, man. Moves. You know, they're they're right there with Zub. You know, it's just it's a tough archetype to make work. You know, we keep trying. We're doing our best, but you know, it's tough. It's tough out there. We got Hulkbuster though now. We got the Hulkbuster <laughs> move. He's in it. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I was playing. I was playing it. Yeah. <laughs> Twenty nine nine. Uh, so I'll say like, okay, this is probably not the best change. It's probably too clunky and it's probably crap. But I like how they're looking at this goddamn card now. For sure. You know, it's about time that 2099 gets some love. Not, or just um, att- some attention. Maybe this isn't love, but, you know, I'll take the attention. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and I guess they say, like, you know, uh, do they say that they'll, they'll keep a look on it? I don't know. They'll keep an eye on it. I don't know. But, uh, oh, yeah, we're open to considering more significant adjustments. Mm-hmm. But they're experimenting with a stat change. Good, you know. So when it get, doesn't get played for another six months, they'll adjust it again. Yeah. <laughs> and the next series drop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. 
And then there's this one. No one thought this. No, I don't think anyone. This was on no one's bingo card, right? No one thought this shit was going to happen. Right. Ghost. Yeah. YOLO. One, two to a three, five. So Ghost gets a premium stat line because no one in their right minds played it on. Uh, played it ever as a one. Um, it showed up randomly in some lists, but it was never, never a good and played card. Now as a three, five, I mean, it's interesting now. Uh, and then you said right away, like when the update came out, you're like, holy shit, this goes in the Sarah tech list and that's going to be ridiculous. And yep. I was like, holy fuck, you're right. Yeah. Because that deck, like the point of Sarah on five is to like play only four power on turn five and you're throwing priority. Mm-hmm. Now, like wheels up, baby, you you don't need priority and you're Shang-Chi, you're Enchantress, you're Killmonger, everything. Shadow you're going King. last. Yeah. Shadow and King. that's it. Yeah. Shadow King. Yeah. All these are going last, and you don't have to put any effort or thought into it. Mm-hmm. Unless you're in a mirror match, but still. Um, this looks like a very interesting change, and I, I didn't play with it at all, but uh, as th- I don't know, like, they mentioned Spectrum and stuff, but I don't know. I don't think you're going to be playing. I don't think Spectrum is making any sort of comeback or anything. I, I don't even think it's good in Spectrum, honestly. I tried it. You know, Va- Valkyrie is not an ongoing card, so I don't think it's very good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know if this like I don't know if Valk decks got better with this being a three five. I mean three five is a good stat line. Mm-hmm. Uh but that Sarah deck seems scary now. And then you probably take out Killmonger or Mobius is what we were talking about. And yeah. you know, Mobius is probably too good right now. Like I don't know, he's just a nice little tech card to have. Yeah. When you can afford to have him. Yeah, and you're a Zabu and, Sarah deck, right? So you know, if it's like Dream yeah. Dimension comes up, you know, it's nice. It's nice to have the Moby. Yeah, and then uh, Killmonger is one that you can probably probably cut right now, mm-hmm. and just use Revis's list that we went over before. Literally that list. Take out Killmonger, put in Ghost. Because what's Killmonger doing right now? Right now in the meta, Killmonger is doing. And there's no Thanos everywhere, so there's the occasional Thanos, and then there's um, you know high Evo decks. But you can just Shadow King the Nebula and the Sunspot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with Ghost, um, I I don't love the you know the best deck in the game you know getting another tool, but I don't think they were really thinking about that at all, and and I think understandably, uh, you know potentially best deck in the game you know I, you know but it seems like the Sarah deck is the best deck in the game right now and has been for for a bit, but um, you know when Ghost first uh, series dropped, um, you know months ago now when it, you know i finally when i picked this card up i was waiting on ghost the series drop and the day it series dropped months ago first thing i did was put it in uh, sarah control i'm like finally i, I don't have to worry about this priority shit and it felt <laughs> it felt horrible like it's just the one two is it's just dog shit like it just yeah. it just feels really bad like one twos i mean angels a one two you know like uh i mean nico's a one two but my god to, if you're gonna be a one two you better have like an unbelievable effect and you know x23 is one of those cards that has an unbelievable effect nico like you know electro ramps on he costs three he's two power you know he ramps and he he sandmans you like he like cripples you <laughs> yeah. you could ramp but like x23 is a one two and ramps like that's how good x23 is you know <laughs> and uh, Ghost doesn't do a whole lot. And I, so I found with that deck that just be smart and pass priority and, you know, play actual good card. Don't don't put the piece of shit Ghost in your deck. That's a one-two. Now, 3-5 is, uh, is another story. 3-5 uh, uh, with a actual useful uh, ongoing effect, that's, that's, that's a legitimately uh, good card in my opinion. And, and I, I think she's going to be good in the decks that she fits in. Yeah, if this start if this card starts getting popular, I mean that's an Eliath buff then, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, true, but it's you know it's tricky. I think at least with the Sarah Control deck, you're you're just playing all three lanes anyway, right? Like yeah. you have Maximus, you have Chadiator, like you're just spamming power on you know on all three lanes, and you know you could Eliath one lane, but you know it's, it might not save you. You know, like Maximus is a two six. You know, like yeah, Eliath's a six two. Yeah, <laughs> it's tough, it's tough. yeah, it is, it is tough. I mean, this is a, this is kind of a cool change, and it's funny because like later on in the afternoon, um, you know, I, I was looking at some stuff, and some of the top players in the game were like, "Oh, this goes in Sarah Control." I'm like, 
Man, no big deal. Just talked about that the minute this thing came out. I'm like, yeah. that's what everyone's thinking. It's like, you know. know. Yeah, it's no it's no secret, right? We know we know what they're trying to what that deck's trying to do. That deck's been around you know since before we even played this game. Now that, that was a popular deck. So yeah. Uh, everybody knows. It's, it's no it's not like I, I came up with some crazy spice or anything. Uh so yeah, we're we're gonna see it. So uh, you know, if you're playing, look out for that. You see a ghost, you see a ghost on there, you see uh, you know, Maximus, uh Chatiator, these cards, you know what's about to happen. Uh they have tech for what you're playing, so make sure you play around it. Yeah. So now, so now let's talk about like when cards like this come out and everyone starts putting them in tech decks. Then you start having mirror matches. Well, how does the degeneration go? Because how did it go with Mobius? It went rogue first, so people started putting rogue in their decks to steal yeah. the effect. Yeah. Then it ended up the full degen is Super Scroll. Mm -hmm. So if you start seeing Super Scroll in Sarah tech decks. It's gonna be time for a uh, time for a nerf, time for a change at that point. <laughs> well, I don't, okay, the super scroll doesn't do a whole lot, does it? I mean, it just no, makes... I don't know. Just that's what happened with the Mobius. Is yeah, like yeah. The, the ongoing stuff. I don't. I think it's just a fun card to like look at the degeneration of the game. Yeah. Then when super scrolls in the meta, there's a degenerate. It's in a degenerate spot. Yeah, leech, leech, and super scroll are uncommon yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. they're there's bad cards to begin with, unless there's something really oppressive. Yeah. So yeah, no, I don't know, but I think I can see like maybe people, people, maybe people playing rogue to just snipe this. Mm -hmm. You think you have priority? Nope. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, is that worth it though? Right? It's a three I mean, five now, right? And rogue's a three two, so you, mm -hmm. you know you're going minus three power to to give them maybe priority, right? And you could you could throw prio with Sarah. I mean, she, she was doing it before this this card existed, right? So yeah. Um, but now yeah, you have I, don't the Chad, I, don't, I don't think you're stopping it. I think they play the ghost. Their shit's coming last, and you just got to like deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's no like yeah. reasonable counter, right? Yeah, poor beat ray, huh? I guess Enchantress. It, Enchantress is is the one where you know she's a four or five. You feel okay, right? She's a four or five. Yeah. You got Zabu. Most Enchantress play, decks play Zabu, so you know they're playing a three five. You play a three five, and uh, and then then it's game on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. You, poor, poor your your poor beat ray deck. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, no, so I, gonna I, 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 I probably shouldn't play it. There's just so much more counters now. <laughs> this is gonna get cheated big yeah, time. Yeah, I, I was throwing prio hard, but yeah, you can't. Yeah, with ghost out there, and nothing you could do. So yeah, I guess I won't bother with that. But yeah, I, I really like this change. Um, like ghost was ghost was absolute dog shit, and uh, I think they did a really good thing here. Um. This is exactly what I'm talking about. I, I wish instead of Hulkbuster, it was another one of these. And um, to your point, at least with 2099, although I had scratching change, very good that they're buff, they're trying to buff 2099. Uh, but they might have missed uh, on that and Hercules. I don't know. They're missing on the move cards, but they're, they're at least they're buffing the move cards, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, they're doing stuff to the move cards. Yeah. I mean, at least they said that they're they're going to experiment with it. So. Again, once it's shit in a month and nobody plays it, or maybe like some of these move people will will find a good use for it. Maybe you know, but yeah, five is so ugh, so clunky. They should just make the the highest cost card. Like there should be no five drops for move. <laughs> you know, you really don't need a five drop in a move. Deck. They should just be like all they need a four drop in a move. <laughs> I was gonna say they should like they shouldn't like Hercules shouldn't even be there. It should just be Heimdall at six, yeah. and then everything three and under, and that's yeah. it. If you want to play like an arrow, you could play an arrow, you know, and you know, she's, she's, she's kind of a move card and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. But yeah, I don't know. Overall, I'm, I really, I love, I love this OTA mm -hmm. and the main reason I love it is because I don't think it's going to warp the meta that much. No. And the meta is just amazing right now. So. I, and I think, I don't know if it's a hot take. I think Haivo is going to be fine too. Just yeah. because what I kind of said during the Luke Cage section. Haivo was really good before this uh, OTA came out, and it's it's just going to be awkward to jam in a Luke Cage in your deck right now. I, I I think it's you know day one. I mean shit, man. I you know I haven't played the last like four hours. I don't know, but you know, it just well, just no, I mean like look like look at I think Haivo is still going to be good. Yeah, like like but look at history though, right? Like yeah. two drops are just so good. Like look when Mobius came out, right? Yeah, two drop Mobius global effect. You jam that in every deck, and it feels amazing to play. Yep. And it's just so oppressive. Mm -hmm. They made him three, and it's like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It feels like shit playing him in some decks. Yeah. But, like, then if you need him as, like, a little tech card, he's not so bad once in a while. Mm -hmm. That's just how Luke's going to be. He's not oppressive, like, at a two drop. Erasing a whole archetype, high Evo, with a two two energy card. Mm -hmm. 
what ridiculous nonsense that was. Um, even though yeah, I didn't really never really like Luke that much, but no, it's good. I like I like a three three cost. You actually have to like pay a price to have him in your deck. For sure, yeah, that's appropriate stat line for Luke Cage for sure. Excuse me, sorry, I sneezed. <laughs> Thank you. I muted myself though. Um, yeah. So, I, anyways, I think this is a W overall. This is a great, great okay. change. Yeah. So I, yeah. I last last patch, unreal. This one, solid. This is good. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You want you want to go over some spotlights or what? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's, let's see what's coming up. Let's talk about. Oh yeah, we'll go over ours. The the one here first. Yeah. Like and the one here first, like this week's. I Obviously, think, you gotta get old Drew Barry. I out think here. it's a tough um, decision for people. You know, lim- if you're limited on resources, I think Grandmaster is like is definitely a pass. You know, now that well, we're he's here, already gone. He's yeah, like he's, I know. I'm just saying he pops up in your yeah. shop. He's six k. Like you know, this is a pretty easy pass. I think. Um, and we, I think we talked about it like a good amount last week too. But yeah, it just he seems like a pass. But B Ray, B Ray seems kind of good. Like, but he's very niche, and he yeah. he's in a very specific type of deck. Um, doesn't have to be Lockjaw, but it kind of has to be Jane Foster, probably Thor. Like, because why wouldn't you? But if you're not playing Thor, okay, maybe like a Wasp or something. But you know, Beat Ray, Jane Foster, and then maybe some some kind of Odin or something like that. Um, because you want to be proccing it twice because he's a double up card, um, or at least buffing him first. So yeah, if you're not into that kind of deck, you definitely don't get him. You know, yeah, uh, you're not into lockjaw stuff. You know, probably don't get him. But uh, he does. I don't know. He seems he seems like a pretty good card to me. Yeah, he seems pretty good mm-hmm. and and pretty good and fun. Yeah, like I said, I have, I'm having fun playing him, and he's not like uh. I don't really feel bad about playing him on four. Like it's, it's not like sometimes you play four drop and you're like, damn, this feels bad. But like he's kind of like, I don't know, maybe it's just the anticipation of, oh, the Stormbreaker, is it coming? Yeah. You know, am I going to get it? <laughs> like, yeah. It, it's just, it's cool. Mm-hmm. Um, it's but the yeah. threat too. It's the threat. Yeah. Like you said, it's, you know, you slam him down and your opponent, your opponent doesn't know if it's coming either. So. Yeah, like if Thor made like Thor makes you nervous when you see yeah. your opponent play Thor, like this guy makes you super nervous. Yeah, because like shit, are they gonna play like are they gonna double on reveal? Like is he's gonna get buff? Like mm-hmm. you're like holy shit, this card is he just gonna be a four twelve or is he gonna be a four forty? You know, <laughs> like well, you know, to your point, it is funny. He is like a Modok discard Dracula. Like that's really what he is. So you know, he sits there and you know. It could could be a twenty, could be could be a three. Like, you know, you don't as the Dracula. The, this guy rolls even higher than that. Um, yeah, but his base is four six, which is kind of nice. So, yeah, yeah, it's good. Like, um, so, you don't mess with the Dracula lane. You might you're probably not messing with the beat rate build lane. Yeah, he's yeah he's good, but niche. Uh, yeah, if you don't like this type of uh, a deck, then yeah, don't don't roll for him. He's not worth six k. I wouldn't spend six k on him. Um, just because how niche he is, he's like a perfect like spotlight cash if you want to get him there. Uh, Elsa, not worth. You know, I wouldn't wait even if you don't have Elsa. I wouldn't rule for her. Mm-hmm. And Galactus is a big bad. I mean, he's gonna be six k until the end of time. Mm-hmm. So he's always worth getting in spotlight caches. But again, he's always gonna be six k tokens. He'll never series drop. So he'll always be in the shop for you at six k. So if you don't want anything this week, you could always just wait for Galactus. But yeah, wait for him to be good, or wait for him to um, come in the next spot line, maybe uh, you know, because it, it'll, it'll pop up again, you know, at some point. Yeah, I mean, Galactus is fine, but he's not like good. Mm-hmm. He's he's okay. He's like you know, he's very very niche as well. Yeah, you have to like that playstyle. I mean, you could argue he's good, but um, I, I'd say it's very a, niche playstyle. A, a buff candidate for sure. Um, that's at least pointing worth pointing out, right? They they tend to you know favor the cards that people actually you know spend money on, um, yeah. As opposed to like the Punisher and stuff like that, right? Captain America. Um, so I I would say like you know I'm not going to be shocked if Elsa gets buffed in the next month. Uh, yeah. Well, that's why I was a little surprised actually. There's no Angela or Elsa buff this one. I thought they would buff Elsa like give her a little love now that she's in uh you know the spotlight cash or yeah. 
in the spotlight cash. So that should get some OTA love. Yeah, yeah. I, I think they hit the right cards. I think they did a good yeah. job. Um, Let's just look ahead next week real quick. Let me uh, quickly go down and find. Here we go. Uh, so the season pass is the Black Swan, which is on reveal until the end of next turn. Your one cost cards cost zero. I mean, that's season pass, so always the best value. Mm-hmm. And then just, I guess, the next spotlight we'll talk about is Super Giant. Zabu and Darkhawk. And this is old. I think Super Giant now is a four or five yeah. instead of a one two. It's a four or five on reveal. All cards played next turn don't reveal until the game ends. Mm-hmm. So it used to be a one two. All cards played this turn and next turn don't reveal until the game ends. Insane. They, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They nerfed it significantly. Yeah. Um, but in that spotlight cash next week is Zabu and Darkhawk. I mean, they're both series four cards. So you can get them for 3,000 tokens. And this looks to be a, like a Series 4 card, I guess. But um, I don't know. That's a pretty good week if you don't have tokens. Yeah. Zabu and Darkhawk, some of the best cards in the game. God, I mean, I feel like most of the cards are, are S5, right? Most of the kind of meta cards, and, you know, they keep coming out, and they're pretty good when they come out. And I, I think you just spend, I think you spend tokens on, on, you know, when there's a good 3k card, I think that's, that's what your tokens are for, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's almost never worth spending 6k on a card It's much better to you. Spotlight key is just a spotlight key, you know, it, you, yeah. know you use a spotlight key to get a 3k, you use the same spotlight key to get a 6k. It works the same for both. So you get 2x value, which is massive. Um, if you only use spotlight keys for series five cards. And then uh, you only use your tokens for, you know, Zabu and Darkhawk and stuff like that. So I, I think, uh, yeah, I think this is a just spend tokens if you need the cards. I, I wouldn't waste spotlight keys on on any card that is, um, like, only way I would I would burn keys on this is if one of these cards was an S5, you know? That you yeah, didn't like, have, okay, that was well, really then good. I, then I get the four and I'm, I'm fine, you know? Like, Howard like Thanos. Howard was like, Howard for, was, Duck was like that for me. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, no, I agree. These like series good series four cards, you gotta just save your tokens and spend that's what you should be spending your tokens on. Mm-hmm. Is cards like Zabu, cards like Darkhawk. It's the only thing you should be spending your tokens on. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, next I guess next week could just be a straight skip. Yeah, skip buy Super Giant and you know. Or or don't, honestly. You, you you might be able to just skip Super Giant. Like now that they nerfed her to the ground, like Yeah, we'll see. I mean that that's this is gonna be a card that like who knows what kind of impact this card is gonna have on the game. Definitely follow uh, Snap Judgment's channel. I mean, this is Glazer's uh, most hyped uh, card in all of uh, Marble Snap. So yeah, he's gonna be cooking for sure. He's gonna try to make it work. So uh, I'll, I'll be looking at his videos, like whatever first video he posts after this card comes out. I'm like, all right, what do you, what do you got, Aaron? What's, what do you see? Yeah, yeah, that's great. Well, yeah. So I mean, uh, speaking of speaking of Glazer, they I mean, uh, pretty sure they announced it. Well, they, they will have announced it by the time this came out this podcast anyway um really cool thing is they're starting a snap league which is amazing Mm -hmm. so what they're gonna do is just have like a monthly league um and then i don't know what they're gonna announce like if there's gonna be prizes and stuff i'm sure there is um basically what you have to do is just join glazer's patreon uh one dollar per month so you pay twelve dollars for the year to be in this league and it's just like one game a week uh, you play, uh, you know, just one conquest match against someone, and then there's like, you know, I think a playoff at the end or something. I think they're doing like a Swiss style, and mm-hmm. there's a lot of creators in it. I think Lambie said he was going to be in it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just like a really awesome thing. And we're going to for... be we're gonna be in there, you know. That's why we're bringing it up. You know? no. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not both. We're, we're getting in there. <laughs> I'm gonna be in there with wild decks, losing on the first week every week. We're gonna so. be we're gonna be the super scrap bros. We're scrapping, we're, we're rocking and rolling. You know, yeah, we're I'm, gonna get in there, and mix it up with some with some with some greasy decks. Yeah, I basically just just uh, wiping my ass with one dollar every month uh, and throwing it in the garbage, hey. uh, <laughs> throwing some grease. Yeah, doing some grease decks in there. Um, but yeah, I think it'll be a really fun time and I hope there's a lot, a lot more people that, that get involved because it seems to be pretty cool and, and really chill. Like it's not like there's no pressure. Like you have a week to finish a game, you set up with people in the discord and it's like, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyone could do one conquest match in a week, you know? Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's cool. And there's a lot, a lot of big people going in, so it'll be fun. It'll be fun to see once it's all announced and everything, mm-hmm. you know? 
Uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm 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 actually real excited for that. It's gonna be really really fun. But yeah, I don't know. It's crazy that they nerfed the super giant and the call obsidian already like so hard. So like, you know, we were freaking out about these cards. You know, a month ago, we gotta relax on these data mines. Uh, like, you know, this even the Discord destroy comment by Glenn. Like, we can't read into any of this stuff. Like what happens on the day it comes out is what happens. We need to live in the present moment. And uh, yeah, like these data mines, they, they're, te- they're clearly testing these cards. Uh, I think they're probably testing harder since Loki, right? Because it was like Loki's yeah. too broken. They did this bullshit patch that didn't fix them. And then they all went on vacation for Christmas. And, and like, <laughs> so like, that was a big problem. <laughs> And I yeah. think they're trying to like really hard to avoid that again. So they're like, they're testing these cards. Cause I mean, we knew Call Obsidian when we read it, this, you know, on Drew Barry's thing, it's a 410 can't be destroyed. Uh, all you need a Thanos stone to play it in the lane. Like this is the most absurd shit. It's like uh, uh ebony blade, but like, you know, just no, no counter like whatsoever, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. no, no, like enchantress into shadow King. Like that you could do with ebony blade. You can't do that. It has a 10 base power. Can't be destroyed. So good luck. Yeah, it's funny. Like you see, you see this card, then it's like, then there's a Tuma who's a 410. Yeah. You're like, has to be by himself. <laughs> like yeah. you have to have all these weird conditions yeah. to get him to be alive. Like, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's a four nine and you just have to have a one power. So it's kind of cool. Yeah. That that could be a skip week too, by the way. Um, you know, this is S five card. Um, I think it'll be interesting, but he's you know, Jessica Jones is a conditional four nine, pretty easy condition to meet. Uh rescue's a four nine, also pretty easy condition to meet, and Call Obsidian's gonna be a four nine. Uh the advantage with him is that you can play him on a uh, turn six. Uh, and he can't be shadow kinged. Pardon? And he can't be shadow king. Yeah, can't be shadow king. You play him on turn six. Um, the disadvantage is, you know, if they play Killmonger, you're, you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, the, the, the big question too, that's going to determine whether he's shit or not. I think KM was talking about this a while ago is if you can play him with a one drop or does there already have to be a one drop on the board? I think there will already have to be one on the board. Yeah. Which makes him way worse. Yeah. Like Cause if you can play him on five, like one board. drop in him. Mm-hmm then great that's awesome like yeah. then he's then he's still pretty good i think as a four nine but if he ha- if there has to be a one drop there then it's yeah makes him worse that's why i'm kind of saying it looks like a skip week because i think there's gonna have to be a one drop there because there does for for crossbones right so yeah this kind of just seems like a crossbones like just a different different kind of crossbones card and, yeah. and i mean shit is he gonna be a series five card like man I mean, you're not going to play him in Lockjaw Thanos. He's he's going to be great in Zoo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Nebula. I'm sure. Like, he, you know, does he good, make like, like a, a Nebula kind of, you know, Saibo? Yeah. Does know? he make like a good cards list, like Darkhawk with Zabu? Like, yeah. he's a 3 9? Yeah. Korg, you just throw yeah, I play Korg, Spider Ham, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, and you just like throw. You could throw him down on any turn. You could throw him down on like you know yeah. turn six. You have like a three. You have a three ten, and then uh, Shang Chi. I think good card is like the best way to describe him. Like you just said, yeah, a good card and a good card's deck. And I mean, do you want to spend six k on just like another good card? I, I don't know. No, but I mean the spotlight. So you got Thanos in there. Thanos Nimrod. Thanos is sick. Yeah, if you don't have Thanos, that's a that's a definite role. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 It's not quite like Galactic. Like Thanos has always been relevant. So, you know, Galactus is kind of Galactus is like a cheese, and the the devs have made it uh, very clear that they do not want Galactus to be good ever. So mm-hmm. <laughs> they they've said that straight up. So that's true. Yeah. Uh, and and they and then through their actions, they've said that about Thanos when yeah. they nerf every <laughs> fucking stone possible. Still very good, for, though, you know. Still doing for it. no reason sometimes. So through their actions, they've done that. But mm-hmm. he still, Thanos, the boy, still comes back, which is great. Yeah, yeah. He is, he is inevitable. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> true. I love it. <laughs> um, well, yeah. I mean, what do you got to say to the people? No big deal. Let's, let's wrap this thing up. Almost an hour and a half here. That's hey, great. It's it's been a it's been a great week snapping. I hope everybody else is having a good time. Yeah. 
keep the vibe, keep the vibes going. Good luck, uh, good luck trying to get the border. If anyone's pushing for borders, anyone's pushing last minute infinite, you know, I believe in you. You got this. Uh, I'll probably give it another go, even though I'm out of tickets. Maybe I'll, you know, start from the proving ground, start from the bottom, and you know, hopefully be here. And uh, you know, rock and roll. Let's get it. Tuesday morning, you will find me in the Infinity Conquest streets, snapping on with Hella. <laughs> 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 getting messages saying Infinity Conquest is almost over. Are you sure you want to play this? <laughs> <laughs> it's happened to me the last three months. <laughs> you goddamn right I do. It's like, yes. And there's people still roping, like, thinking about terms. Like, bro, you don't have time for this. Yeah, yeah they didn't There's, like, the ten message. minutes left. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Honestly, like, the meta's in a good spot. Play decks that, you know, you have a lot of fun with because they're probably good because everything's good right now. And yeah, Hulkbuster 2-3, wheels up, baby. <laughs> Peace. Peace.